All right. So hello, everybody. Uh, happy Friday. Happy Fabrication Friday from Ascent Fabrication here. Uh, Joe Fairley, the, uh, looking towards uh, kind of going off of the couple themes um, we've been going for the digital workflow. We've talked about 3D scanning. We've talked about 3D printers. Uh, now we're diving a little bit deeper into the options for uh, you know, digital clinical modification software. And uh, last week we had the Macurus crew on. Uh, this week I uh, want to bring on uh, my other friends here from Spentes. Uh, we've got Brian and Florian. Uh, these guys have a wealth of knowledge of um, you know, their software, but also the kind of field as a whole in orthotics, uh, starting out in upper limb orthotics. And uh, so I wanted to give them a, a brief introduction here and allow them to kind of show off um, what Spentes is all about. And then we get into, uh, you know, some, maybe some use cases and how, um, how clinicians today can be using the software. So Florian, Brian, take it away. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Joe, for inviting us today. Um, it's always great to, to, to talk about the industry and how the industry will evolve, of course, like in the coming months and years. And of course, also like talk about the, about Spentis. Um, so just a bit of uh, context. Um, I'm Florian, the co-founder of Spentis. Um, Spentis is a Belgium company. So we started the company five years ago. Um, the goal of Spentis is to implement the 3D technologies inside orthopedic workshops. Um, and by 3D technologies, we mean 3D scanning, 3D modeling, and 3D printing. And with those technologies, you can create custom-made medical devices, so custom-made orthosis and, and prosthesis, as you all know. Um, we'll go a bit more into the details of the solution after. Um, maybe one more word also on myself. Um, so Florian, um, I have a biomedical engineer background. Um, I studied in Belgium and in Italy, um, and I'm more in charge of the technical side of the of the company. But maybe Brian, you can also like introduce yourself. Yeah, so I'm Brian Kraft, and I'm actually an application specialist at Spentis. And uh, I got started in the digital workflow and using digital tools um, a little bit over two years ago and have been able to have the chance to introduce 3D technology to hundreds of clinicians over that span of time and have seen how uh, 3D works well within clinics, some of the challenges that clinicians face when integrating. And uh, I believe I bring a, a unique experience to the, the conversation here with having the ability to work with so many different people and, and hear so many different uh, feedbacks and, and challenges too. So. Um, I'm happy to be part of the conversation and happy to, to work with Spentis and work with our partners and uh, just really looking forward to how together us all as an industry, vendors, uh, practitioners, material scientists, how we're all working to improve patient devices, improve uh, efficiency within clinics and all working on the same mission. So uh, it's, it's a pleasure and looking forward to the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You no, know, I definitely appreciate the level of collaboration that you guys show off and, um, you know, have done with me so far. Uh, that's what I think really the ONP field, you know, needs right now, as well as other allied health professionals being involved in parts of the process. Um, you know, so having everyone working together to, you know, learn what we can do in the digital workflow is uh, very, very important to me as a clinician um, and, you know, working together with you guys in the field. So, um, yeah, if you could kind of go now into, you know, uh, who is Spentis as a company and um, kind of what, uh, what exact software are you guys running? Yeah, um, so I can, I can take that part. Uh, so Spentis, you can see that as a digital workshop. Okay, so Spentis is a platform that enables CPOs to create custom-made medical devices um, and leverage the power of the 3D technology, so meaning 3D scanning and 3D modeling and 3D printing. Um, and so at Spentis, we want to streamline the whole workflow to create the custom-made medical devices with um, this platform, this digital workshop. Okay, streamlining the whole workflows, as we said, like a lot of different players in the industry, um, printers, manufacturers, uh, materials, scanners, manufacturers, etc. And with Spentis, we want to streamline the whole workflow to really like easily implement um, this digital workflow inside the orthopedic workshops. So just to come back on the whole workflow to be sure that we are all aligned, um, 
First, you need to 3D scan the patient's limb. Then you need to correct the 3D scan file. Then you need to 3D model, design the orthopedic device. And then with this 3D model, you have to produce it, manufacture it with 3D printers. So you have a lot of different steps in this workflow. And Spensys, we want to streamline the whole workflow. So you have one platform gathering all the steps um, so that the orthopedic technicians and the CPOs can really use the Spentis platform to go through all the steps in an easy way, in an efficient way, um, to optimize the whole workflow and, and then at the end um, produce the custom-made uh, orthosis or, or prosthesis. Mm -hmm. um, and so at Spentis, we work on a lot of different steps. Um, so scanning, correction, scan correction, modeling, printing, implementing a lot of different tools inside the platform so that the orthopedic technicians can use those different tools to create um, the end product, the end uh, devices. Um, we work with CPOs to develop all those tools um, and to be sure that when we implement those tools and implement the Spentis solution inside the orthopedic workshop, we do that in an easy way, in an efficient way, um, so that they can recognize those different tools um, with their traditional workflow and tra inside this, their traditional workshops, so that they can recognize the, tool, the tools and really like use them um, in an easy way. Uh, it's really like um, the, the key value of Spentis is really like to implement the 3D technologies and the digital uh, technologies in an easy way uh, to create the custom-made devices. Yeah, so in yeah. your software... Oh, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, and I just, I kind of want to compound on that because of easy and simplicity and streamlining and, and why we as a company have focused on that being some of our key values is because throughout the years we've seen the segmented workflow as Florian was mentioning, we've seen the complex workflow, we've seen the cost of implementing all of these tools and we find these challenges as barriers to entry to mm -hmm. slowing the adoption of 3D technology in sure. clinics, both small, medium and large size clinics. These are all challenges that most people face. Um, so what Spinti's focuses on is making this technology accessible to everyone. So to creating a tool and, and making a tool that can be integrated to where each practitioner within the clinic can actually access it, to where there's not just a single expert that receives files and then models and then prints within a single clinic. Everybody can do this within a clinic. Sure. So yes, uh, streamlining and making things more easy and things like that uh, can sometimes you know have some negative connotations when people think about streamlining but at the end of the day we are creating tools for everyone to use at every level of experience from people with zero scanning and CAD experience to the folks that want to create some of the repeatable common devices uh, with speed and simplicity so Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, having that kind of sim simple workflow, um, you know, I, I know that simple is a very, you know, involved term where <laughs> some people might find it simple. Others might find it, you know, complete, um, completely not simple where, you know, they're coming from a standpoint of doing everything by hand, never even touching a 3d scanner before having to learn all these new skill sets when, um, you know, they might not have ever had any of that, even in their earlier, you know, schooling as well. Um, myself coming from a, a physics and kind of engineering background, I had that CAD experience. So it was easier for me to start to implement some of these things in my clinical practice um, and now with Ascent Fabrication. But, you know, for some uh, practitioners, this is pretty daunting stuff. So, you know, from some of the demos you guys have given me before, I have seen that um, it has been pretty streamlined and uh, more so hand-holding where uh, you're kind of directing them step by step of uh, the modifications or, you know, device design and creation steps that should be done. Um, so I thought that was a really nice, you know, feature of Spentis, um, you know, and the fact that you guys have the actual device creation um, aspects to the software is, you know, fairly unique as well. Uh, some of the modification softwares that have been out there for a while either take that step out of your hands completely or don't offer it at all. Um, you know, then they're, they're determined to bring it to either a carver where then we go back to traditional means, uh, but having the ability to do either, you know, is also helpful. So, 
with those um, kind of sticking points, maybe, you know, how does uh, Spentis address, um, you know, kind of these unique tools uh, for practitioners? And what have you seen, you know, most widely used and, uh, you know, maybe some, having some clinicians say, well, you know, I really like this feature, you know, what would those features be? Yeah, um, maybe one last comment on the last topic. Um, so a lot of digital technologies are actually out there since like the last 15 years. So you have like 3D scanners, um, 3D printers as well, um, also like CAD software out there since like um, the 90s maybe. Um, but actually they were not used on a daily basis by all CPOs and orthopedic technicians because first it was complex and I think it, we don't have to be scared of saying it is complex. Uh, they need training. Um, they need like a lot of practice behind a computer to really like use the different CAD software and like would say the whole workflow um, to be sure that they use in the correct way. And, and I think that's why like 3D technologies or digital technologies are not a, a standard for the moment in the industry because it, it was because there were a lot of partners, a lot of complex software out there. Um, and so the whole workflow take too much time or took too much time um, for the CPOs to create and, and to create the custom made device or use the 3D technologies. And so that's why when you have like new companies and we are not the only one that spent is doing that, but new companies really like to, to streamline the whole workflow, it really helped for the CPOs and the orthopedic technicians to use um, um, the technologies, the digital technologies. Um, then regarding the features, uh, we have a lot of different features. As we said, we want really to, so we know that focus is important, but we want to focus on the whole workflow. Um, so we have features inside the scanning um, process. So for example, when you use um, our scanner, when you try to scan, uh, or when you scan the patient's limb, um, we create a silhouette to be sure that um, when the CPOs will scan the patient's limb, they put the patient's limb in the right position. Okay, the right immobilization position. That's a simple uh, features, but that really helps the CPOs to use the 3D scanners in a correct way, because it, it is the first input of the solution of the workflow. And so the first input needs to be correct. Um, and if they experience a nice, or if they have a nice experience in the 3D, uh, during the 3D scanning process, it really helps um, to streamline and to, yeah, to use the whole workflow. Um, then you have a lot of different tools during the whole workflow. Uh, for example, the the, the correction of the scan, um, the CPOs can sculpt the scan. So maybe, I don't know if I can share my screen. Um, it's maybe not the best during a podcast, but still, we're going to try. Yeah, you oh. should be able to. No, one error is, uh, no, I cannot share my screen. Doesn't really matter. No. You should have tried before. <laughs> um, <laughs> so when you, when you, 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 so inside the Spenty software, when you correct the scan, you have different possibilities. You have, um, you can pause the scan, meaning you can put the scan in the right immobilization position. So actually we replace virtually the, um, the articulation of the limb, for example, the wrist inside the scan so that the CPUs can use um, the scan and move the scan to put it in the right immobilization position. That's one feature. The other one is, for example, you can sculpt on the scan. So you can add volumes or remove volumes on the scan. So it's really like as you do on the, with the, with the, with the cast, with the plaster um, or with the mold, you can really like remove volume or add volume to, um, I don't know, add pressure or remove pressures, remove, um, avoid irritations, remove pressure points around the steeloid, for example, if you want to create a, an upper limb orthosis. So you have different tools during the whole workflow to really like help the CPOs to, to use those technologies. And actually like we try to really like replicate the traditional workflow um, with digital tools. So all the things that you do inside this, on, inside your workshops, um, we actually take those um, yeah, modifications that you do and we develop them with digital tools. So adding volumes, yeah. correct, correcting the, the, the angles, um, so the position of the, of the, of the limb, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we do that in a way that as, as practitioners, uh, practitioners are very tactile feedback oriented, right? So working with your hands and feeling exactly where the, the, the patient's anatomy is and where these volumes are. So we do it in a way that's incredibly visual to where the, the practitioner will be able to see these, these changes that are being made. And 
we're trying to bridge the gap between, okay, losing tactile feedback to going digital and doing it with a tool and process that is guided in a sense and highly visual, I think is important to share. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ryan, and I have succeeded to actually um, <laughs> share my screen. Um, so as you can see on the screen here, you, have, you are inside the Spenti software. And as he said, like as Brian said, you have a guided workflow going from cleaning the scan, posing the scan, so putting the articulation at the wrist and moving the scan to put it in the right immobilization position, correcting the, 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 the thumb if you want to immobilize the, the, the thumb, um, and then sculpting, so adding volumes or removing volumes on the scan. What is nice too is now that inside the Spentis um, software, inside the Spentis solution, you can see the texture, meaning you can see um, the color, the skin of the patient. Um, and, and this is quite important because I think some, some CPOs, um, they like to see the patients, have the feeling um, of touching the, the, the patient, the patient's limb, um, to really like correcting the, 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 the patient's uh, limb. Um, and now they can do that inside the Spentis platform. Um, so for example, when they add volumes, um, you can add volumes here, um, you can add volumes everywhere on the scan, um, and you can see directly the impact that you have uh, with the colors. I think it really helps um, the CPUs to be more comfortable and, and yeah, at ease when modifying the, the, the scan. Yeah, I think that's a huge, huge help for um, you know, being able to uh, also convey you know, some of that underlying bony anatomy of the patient. Um, you know, having to mark up their their residual limb or their whole limb, um, you know, and and show where trim lines might go, where you where you might have taken hand measurements, um, you know, where bony anatomy is again to offload those areas or to provide cushioning, um, you know, and an OBJ file, right, coming from 3D scanners that are able to export an OBJ. Um, I've seen as absolutely extremely necessary to you know having a better end result for that device so um, definitely a nice feature to have yeah, yeah. surely and um, you know a feature that all of our our partners use that they may not even know that is used is smoothing of these scans so we this is a very repeatable process that happens with every single scan that a practitioner takes, regardless if it's a Spinti scan or a scan with their own scanner, a smoothing process happens, uh, again, consciously or unconsciously. So what we've done is we have taken some of these repeatable things within the workflow. Mm -hmm. And because we're trying to reduce the amount of time that the, the clinician will interface with a digital workflow, we've taken these things and automated where we can, and then given full control uh, where it's necessary, just as Florian was mentioning, posing and correcting of, of limbs and things like this. This isn't something that automation can do for each and every single patient, but there are small things within our workflow that happen uh, on the back end, and it's purely based on uh, clinical data and then just repeatable tasks. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, having some of that repetition uh, involved in the digital workflow definitely saves some time. Um, yeah. So with the smoothing, you know, I, I think it's important to note here as well that um, I'm sure you've taken some of that clinical data input to, you know, how much do we need to smooth something before we really start to, uh, you know, decrease the overall volume of the scan um, and not quite affecting that as much because when we do smooth it like that, you know, we're, we're filling in valleys and taking down peaks and, you um, you know, if you've played around in any 3D software, you'll kind of notice that depending on what tools you use. Um, but it is definitely it, going through a specific workflow uh, time and time again, trying to repeat the same workflow is important because say you were able to smooth something a certain amount. Um, you know, I think that might be useful for people to know beforehand as well. Um, you know, because some scanners may not have, um, you know, again, as much detail or uh, like we were talking earlier before the recording, you know, some of uh, measurements might be slightly off. So, yeah, having that knowledge of some smoothing process has happened, um, you know, prompting them to put measurements on if they want to make sure that, 
you know, everything is, um, you know, exactly what they're, they think they're looking at, right? Because we're trying to directly translate what modifications they have done on plaster to the digital world. And so, you know, by making that process streamlined of uh, the wording of the tools similar, um, you know, the process of which they would do that modification similar, um, again, is I think pretty important. And um, it seems like you guys have done that pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just one more comment on this one. Um, you have a lot of 3D scanners uh, on the market. Um, you have some expensive ones, more affordable ones. Um, you have a lot of different scanners, meaning a lot of different outputs or a lot of different quality also. Um, and so that's why like, we, at Spensys, we want to work with all those scanners. Um, depending on the applications, depending on the patients, depending on the product you want to produce, we need to choose the right scanner. So that's why at Spensys, we, have, we made the decision to accept all kind of 3D scanners. So meaning if you already have scanners, you can still use the Spenty solution. Yeah. Um, but as you said, like those scanners, like the output is always different, um, are always different. And so that's why we had to um, have a way inside the Spenty's platform to really like um, yeah, smooth the device to be sure that the following steps, um, so the modding steps or the printing steps, will still be a consistent and will still be good for the orthopedic technicians or the CPU. Even though they use different scanners, the output should still be like really of high quality, um, even though if they use like some more affordable scanners. So that's why really like the, that's the, 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 the goal of Spentis is that to have an open platform so that they can use any 3D scanners to have still um, the, a good output, a good end product at the end of the workflow. Yeah, and to add on that as well, uh, that's the front end of the workflow, but to also be agnostic on the back end. So to utilize any type of 3D printer to produce the orthoses, uh, that's very important. And w w what we've done there is to validate the most common forms of printing uh, in OMP today, FDM printing, DLP uh, for more upper extremity uh, cases in hospitals. That's very uh, prevalent multi-jet fusion um, and a, an array of other different technologies but because we can validate these technologies within a certain range of parameters we can also give the practitioners the freedom to utilize our printing service if they would like to help reduce the the cost of initial investment or utilize their own printers and their own printer partners like a synth